getting to it on the phone. Yeah, you, you know what I'm saying? Nigga, drive over bridge, all, all this good stuff. I'm not going to put my phone on a gimbal or a self-rotating tripod, no none of that, and then turn around and open up my buns. Dog. For a 1080p camp, I ain't doing that. My nigga, the way he that did. That nigga is, is Zesty. His new name, it ain't Freddie Gibbs no more. It's Freddie Pendergrass. It's Freddie this nigga got a this nigga is Spready Gibbs. Freddie, Freddie Gibbs. Pendergrass. It, it, it's yeah. over with, man, for cuz. He might as well put mustard and ketchup on hot dog for the rest of his career, man. We're gonna look at him different. Yeah, like and then not on top of that. <laughs> See ya, see ya, see Got my nigga cheese in this bitch. Midwest, Midwest, UGK, nigga. Oh, we already know. See ya. I said my hands on this money. I'm caught up in this lifestyle. This hundred round drummy. Hit a knock a nigga right down. My dope on my scale. If he knockin' watch lights out, my spot do be booming. I'm caught up in this lifestyle. My hands on this money. I'm caught up in this lifestyle. Thank you by saying welcome home to that boy, go yeah yo, you did. Fort Worth rapper, you know what I mean? Just left the feds. Definitely one of the um, one of the one of the biggest rappers out that DFW area that was putting it down. Yeah, but I put, yeah, like we gonna say he like one of the pioneers in the DFW in this generation because let's just be honest, if Go Yeah Yo would have did some of the things he needed to do versus Tune into the streets more than he focused on his opportunities. Goyeo would have got farther than he did before he went to the feds because Goyeo had a fan base. He got a loyal fan base. And not only that, he had a different swag. They brought a different element to the culture of hip hop coming out of Texas. Whereas we see how Houston got the swangers and, and the paint jobs, but we also see Dallas got the paint jobs, but they ride in flat face rims and you know, Boy. big inches on they rent. You see them, they do it different. And then you get to you get to see how Fort Worth roll. We got the we got we kind of got a, a good full glimpse into the having a perspective on Fort Worth through Goyeo because Goyeo was that one that broke open so much out the Fort Worth area that we start focusing and functioning and trying to pay attention to Fort Worth more. In the music and then we got to see the street aspect of fort worth that came along with it to understand that go yayo came from this environment that really wasn't no play play environment yet you got a rapper that's starting to blow up out that environment and it gave everybody else a voice too to be able to begin their careers whether it be rapping or whatever they want to be because at the end of the day when go yayo was starting off before charleston white was anything he actually knew charleston white Mm -hmm. So it's like a lot of people that's coming out of Fort Worth got a voice because sometimes all it takes is one voice to make it through for all the other ver voices to be heard. And I feel like Go Yale don't get his just due a lot of times when it comes to paying homage to niggas that gave Fort Worth real chance. You see what I'm saying? Mm hmm. And we got to salute that on this show because I mess with the boom guy. You know what I'm saying? So welcome home. Go Yayo, man. Hopefully he stay focused enough to chase the career instead of the streets, man. We know you come from the streets. We watched you grow in the industry, pulling up, fighting niggas, not ducking no smoke. We know you with everything that you rapped about. You no longer have to prove that to us for real. You see what I'm saying? Prove to us that you can go be the star that we know you could be because I know you can go be a star, but only you gonna hold yourself back from that, bro. I mean, um, from me seeing like like you said, welcome home, go yeah, yo. And let me correct this, like you said, I gotta say he may be he is the face of Fort Worth when I thought about Fort Worth rappers, you know what I mean? Because he had the leadership. Of course, you know, his hand game 100. You done seen him go to work a couple times, just like we seen 
Sauce go to work a couple times on, on camp. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Um, but for the most part, like you said, you can see the difference. Like, like and, said, and when I was speaking on the voices being heard, because of Go Yayo, I got hip to GS Lil Ronnie. Because of Go Yayo, I got hip to CJ Casino, Bugatti Casino, and 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 all these other dudes, Lil Juvie, and all these other dudes coming up out that area, the DFW area, the Fort Worth. That you see what I'm saying? So it's like you have to give just do because of that. Because if I don't hear Yayo, I never get a chance to hear GS Ronnie. That's not to say I never would have heard of Get Money Lil Ronnie down the line, but at that moment, I got hit to him by way of Go Yayo. CJ Casino, right. it's a lot of dudes that's that's nice in that area that I got hit to through Go Yayo. So to me, he was the voice of Fort Worth. That Man. gave everybody else the opportunity to, to 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 become something that I did get hit to. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to everybody in Fort Worth because Fort Worth got a uh they music scene to me can keep up with any region. I just feel like with Fort Worth, it's 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 the beef that hold them back, like any other region. Until you get over the beef, you won't excel like you want to. In the game, you know what I mean? It's hard. It's a gangster city for sure. It's a gangster city for sure. Yeah, like um, but on to the next, bro. We gotta talk about Valentine's Day. Happy belated Valentine's Day to all of the females, but y'all about to hear some shocking news, man. So okay, check game. Mm -mm -mm. Um Freddie Gibbs. Freddie Gill's baby mama had the nerve to expose that boy very bad yesterday. Now, she said that she'd been trying to uh, get up with him, the co parent. You know the you know the baby mom name? No, they didn't it it's on uh IG, but I didn't even really I just went with Freddie Gill's baby mama. You did. But she said that uh, the co-parenting, you know what I mean? They could never get it together or whatever. And yeah. basically, I think she still has some feelings for him, which all baby mamas have feelings for their baby dad. That's usually when they get to exposing you because you you um, you um disregarding their emotions and their feelings. Now they mm -hmm. feel like they need to make you feel like how they feeling right now yeah they got to bring you back down the size yeah yeah that's usually what that is cuz so freddie gibbs new old lady uh she happened to <clears throat> she happened to take do a little video clip you know when the when the females do a little video clip or whatever mm -hmm. trying to trying to show that you know they in love and Basically, what she said, she said, Happy Valentine's Day, Freddie Gibbs. I'm in love with you unconditionally. Thank you for existing. You're my soulmate, pound sign, black love, pound sign, forever love. So, <clears throat> Freddie Gibbs' baby mama said, Okay, since you want to post that, she said, Block me on Twitter when I have a picture of you spreading your cheeks is insane i'm gonna spell them but, <laughs> but that, she said i'm gonna spell the other one but that one i'm gonna post it so i'm just thinking she said she posted the picture on twitter of him spreading it spreading his cheeks with a road yeah. so <laughs> i tell my old lady i'm like hey man pull up shawty uh Pull up shot of Twitter. So she pulled it up, man. I turned my head so fast, man. I said, bro, man, I know goddamn well this man didn't do what I think he just did. Like, bro, what convinced you to bend over and take <laughs> both of your hands and spread your ass sheets and show this lady your ass whole? 
Now I don't heard of niggas now, moving. Now, now this is the this the sad part about it, right? Oh my god! Because either way you want to try to justify this, it's messed up, cause. Oh my god, bro! It's outright messed up, dog. But I got I'm I'm just gonna throw a benefit of the doubt out there because okay, what if they was into it? I'm just just a scenario. I'm trying not to make the nigga look bad because the nigga looks terrible, bro. But okay, oh. Let's just say him and her was into it. Ooh, 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 ooh. Uh -huh. And they was just getting disrespectful to each other. And he was trying to be on some bitch kiss my ass. Uh-huh. And that was him saying it through the picture. But then on the outside looking in to us, it looks like dude was fruit in the bowl. Facts. Like, once again, I ain't defending this nigga. I'm just throwing out a little benefit of the doubt. Like, it could have uh, been that. But at the end of the day, whether it was that or something else, it still looked just as bad. My nigga. To us. Oh, my Because I'm never, even no matter what we going through, I could have just got out the shower and we get into it on the phone. Yeah, you, you know what I'm saying? Nigga drive over bridge, all, all this good stuff. I'm not going to put my phone on a gimbal or a self-rotating tripod, no, none of that, and then turn around and open up my buns. Dog. For a 1080p camp, I ain't doing that. My nigga, the way he that did. That nigga is, is Zesty. His new name, it ain't Freddie Gibbs no more. It's Freddie Pendergrass. It's Freddie this nigga got a this nigga is Spreading Gibbs. Spreading Freddy Gibbs. Pendergrass. It, it, it's yeah. over with, man, for cuz. He might as well put mustard and ketchup on hot dog for the rest of his career, man. We're gonna look at him different. Yeah. Like and then not on top of that. <laughs> sexually, bruh. Sexually, bruh. What type of sex is you having with these females, bruh? For you to be that comfortable doing that, cause no nigga yes. come. No nigga don't do that, bro. Let me tell you something, bro. The only way a nigga do something like that, and I'm gonna say this because if you've been to prison and you don't went through that shakedown shack, or you don't got off that prison bus and went through intake, you know they tell you to bend them, bend over and and call. It he wasn't in jail though. So nigga, jail. what was you doing? Facts. Facts. You ain't squad. That nigga wasn't in R and D and intake. Get nigga, nigga. He ain't oh. have an inmate. Nigga, what is you doing? You had a rolly <laughs> on your wrist while you opening in your ass. <laughs> oh my god, bro. This nigga was flexing, <laughs> bro, and flexing. If you get what I'm saying, yes, bro. Like my nigga, I, I like, bro. A nigga, a nigga could never take your music serious no more. Yeah, buddy, you didn't turn. And, and the then Shaw ain't even delete the picture, bro. See, they you said it was, they said it was another picture. They said it was a picture of her laying on top of him while he was on his stomach. Looked like she was giving him back shots. But she deleted that one, but she kept the other one up with the nigga spreading the spreading. I ain't gonna even hey yeah. listen. She probably did hey, don't believe that this she deleted it. She probably waiting for that nigga come back. <laughs> when he respond, however, whenever, however, that when that picture she claiming she lost gonna come out. He wanna take her to court. I bet you do. <laughs> I <laughs> bet you do. Niggas done seen your butt mustache, nigga. <laughs> I bet you do want to take her to court. To court. Oh, my God. She teaching you a lesson. She said, I'm going to teach you. I'm going to teach you. You think you finna shine on me, nigga, and she said, blocking me knowing I got a picture of you spread. What, what are you going to sue her for? Defamation of character and exposure of your sewage area, nigga? 
public embarrassment or something. Like, <laughs> bro, it's over for you, player. DJ Academics and Ghana is going to slam you on your head the rest of your career. You gave them. You lost that battle. Now I know why Cuz been wearing slacks and button-up shirts. Bro. Nigga think he living, he think he in Bo Boogie Nights the movie, cuz. <laughs> Bro, when academics hit that Hennessy, his ass in trouble. He gonna cook him. It's gonna Man, be a good night. He in trouble. Academics gonna get him. Everybody gonna get him. Black Soprano family going to get him. Yeah, man. Dipset go get him. BSF. We going to get him. Yeah, he ain't going to never get away with this. Never. Now, okay, we got to we gotta talk about a little about this DA Fanny Willis now. DA Fanny Willis lied to church. Lied to the church. Now she said that she paid all the prosecutors the same amount amount of money when she went to church, but it came out in court that Nathan Wade was the highest paid prosecutor. She paid Nathan Wade over six hundred and fifty thousand dollars, and the person that worked up under Wade that was a prosecutor he was on again like ninety three k. Don't you think she owed the church an apology? Cause I think she owe everybody an apology. Cause you, you, you've been like I said before. Cause the same people she trying to lock up for breaking the law, she playing hypocrite because you're trying to lock people up. And in some instances, you don't have uh the proper evidence, but you put niggas in sick, sticky situations regardless where they happen to spend their money to prove they innocent when the whole time you guilty of so many things and you constantly even attacking politicians you like but you taking taxpayers money and forking it over to your sugar daddy Putting this nigga in position that he don't have no knowledge at even managing mm -hmm. these positions of in the justice department in the in 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 law that you didn't put this man in he has no knowledge to none of it but because you having sex with this nigga mm -hmm. you paying him a overpaid amount of money you got him in a position. The nigga should be like a principal at high school or something somewhere. Right. <laughs> but you got this nigga playing a position that's right behind you when it's probably somebody that's right by you that should be right behind you. But mm. because you sleeping with this nigga, you put him in a position he can't even run, which make it better for you. On top of that, you overpaying a nigga. And on top of that, you tricking on the nigga. Mm -hmm. So you really paying the nigga twice. <laughs> for financial gain man Fonnie Willis is the perfect example of an old washed up woman that lost her sauce with men a long time ago and this nigga made her feel like she got it back and she put herself in in the line of fire for this nigga facts Trying to call Donald Trump a liar and say he corrupt, but look how that backfired. You everything you said he was. Come on, man. Like you said a year ago, anybody that's working up under you shouldn't have no personal dealings or be stealing no money, and you did both of them. And let's get this straight, right? Mm -mm. I'm not sitting here attacking this woman. She deserves anything I'm going to give her because at the end of the day, you a grown woman. So you should have enough maturity in your brain. You should have enough polish and understanding of the do's and the don'ts and the rights and the wrongs mm -hmm. of your position to know 
whether you in love or not, you don't let nothing outside your job jeopardize your job and you let a nigga jeopardize not only your job but your position and the yeah. position you had at your job was not manager at Wendy's nigga so you put your life and your and your and your livelihood and your name at risk your face card all that at risk for some wood for some wood and you don't think we finna talk about you you yeah. need to be talked about every day because you didn't turn into sexy red facts fuck <laughs> out of here and now they no ask neck me. having Bro, hard they hair do having ass they asking that jelly she donut shaped ass Fonnie willis man she they asking that she get disbarred, bro. You think they she think she gonna lose them license? They're gone. She know they gone. You didn't did so much lying under oath. Once you lie under oath, you lost all your pr in the justice department. It's all way for you. Once you lie under oath, bro, it's over with for you in the justice department, especially when you hold a position like that. Mm -hmm. Lord, her double chin having ass finna had plenty of time to lay down with that nigga now. Yeah, cause both of them, the whole office about to get fired. The whole office. Every time, every time I think about this situation, you know what I think of it. You know how I see it, like a nigga in the hood messing with a broad from the projects. It's mm -hmm. income tax season. He get her big check. He laying on the couch, waggling his toes, dropping D off, asking for money. Mm -hmm. Ain't don't do nothing around there. Don't help her with nothing, no nothing. But she going to get this nigga eighty percent of the check with hopes that he going to flip it, give her. You see what I'm saying? Right, right. For sure. This is like that to me. Right. And we talking about a a. a And this motherfucker got the got the uh position where they could take your freedom away and 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 she doing shit like this. Mm -hmm. And we ain't supposed to feel nigga. I ain't gonna even capture you, and we rarely ever do this on this channel, nigga. But as much as you want niggas to go to jail and you've been doing all of this, we need to turn the tables because your ass need to go to jail. Spade a spade, my nigga. Stud built that like, straight up. Got to call a spade a spade. She that's all she was wishing on that jail. Like, oh, this music group need to go to jail. This music group need to go to jail. This music, like, she wanted to lock up the whole Atlanta rap scene. The whole to the point where niggas stopped putting out music. Mm hmm. Them niggas was scared. They was paranoid. They were scared, boy. They were scared. Shoot, Curtis Snow said he had them moved out of Atlanta for a couple of months when DA Fannis had when Fannie Willis had uh but why she doing that? Yeah. Why she doing that? He taking the taxpayers' money and giving it to a nigga that don't even know how to run his position, which is right behind her. Messing her ass to jail. I can't even I can't even blame nothing on him because if he's a user, a manipulator, a womanizer, he was doing what he was supposed to do. Mm -hmm. He just being a man. Curtis Snow said he had to move. He said, nigga, he moved to the country for a couple of months until uh Fannie Willis calmed down with with tan up atlanta that's how bad it what was. it was was now think about it now now that we know all of this right mm -hmm. now let's rewind back now think about it she was pressing hard to lock so many niggas up drop so many ricos enforce these laws scare all the niggas on the streets like they was finna go to jail next mm -hmm. who's to say the extra pressure she was applying to niggas wasn't a smoke screen for all the wrong she was doing because she was doing wrong while she was doing this facts facts 
taking tropical vacations with taxpayers' money. And this this lady had the nerve to sit here and say she didn't give him the taxpayers' money. Every time they went out of town, she gave it to him in cash. Whether if it was three hundred, I mean three thousand dollars, four thousand dollars, six thousand dollars, it was never. It's nothing to trace. And we know in this world, two thousand twenty-four. Okay. That's unheard of. Regardless, regardless, I bet you was giving it to him in cash because you already giving him a check that he don't deserve. <laughs> oh Lord, Fanny. You the dumbest criminal ever. Like you went so hard on our community to where we can't give you no slap on the wrist. And we can't give you no support neither. No, straight up. It is what it is. This you is like Al Sharpton, Jesse Jackson. It's like all these all niggas of that. All going of that. against the black community, bro. Yeah. You attacked us, and then at the same time, you fell victim to us because you were sleeping with a nigga that was that 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 puts your job on the line. Yeah. I mean, now they're going to be talking about her the rest of 2024. Because she fumbled 17 footballs, cuz. Not mm -hmm. the ball. She fumbled the balls. Mm -hmm. All of them. They did that. They did that. And and they got to let every everybody on the case is filing that the whole office be disqualified and they go it's gonna happen because it's corrupt there's too much corruption going on this was a big case and she dropped the ball she did and we, hopefully we get donald trump back in the office man for real i hope we do because aunt was looking out for the community while she trying to Stop him from blessing the streets. I don't care what nobody say. Ain't nobody bless the streets like Donald Trump. No, at the same time, at the same, at the, in the same breath. Real talk. As 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 we from the streets may look at it like it was a blessing from Trump. A lot of people didn't take advantage of them blessings. That's why they broke as hell now. Mm -hmm. So all the PPP getters and all the the the, the, the scam yeah. grants and all of that y'all was doing that y'all now y'all can't get ahead because y'all went and did it and took vacations instead of take care of your business y'all end up in the wrong position y'all like Fonny Willis too y'all was mishandling funds nigga yeah and now them folks finna get you up out of office you gonna be working at the cafeteria. She got herself you, up out of office. Them folks ain't got to get her out of right, office. She got right. her. She, she got herself up out of there. We can't yeah. say no. You see what I'm saying? Right. She took. Her, she grabbed herself by the collar and fucking removed herself with the moves she was making and the actions she had. She took. And the wife, buddy, wife ain't making no better because she proved to the court that. The day Fanny paid him is the day he dumped her. The day he divorced. The same day that money hit his hand. Is y'all hearing this, bro? Paint basically letting y'all know, like, it's not that it's not already documented information, but this old She's shaped like an organ player from church. <laughs> the DA was messing with a married man. Not only was she messing with a married man, they ended up moving in together. He ended up putting this nigga in a position he can't even qualify for. <laughs> he was paying him for that position. And then paying him with lump sums of cash too yes that's a bad man bonnie willis is dumber than the average bitch from the project i agree 
But on to the next man. We got to talk about Uncle um, um Shannon Sharp and Mike Epps meeting up and squashing the internet beef that they had going on the other day, man. Now, I must say that I rock with both of them boys because for one thing, they are two successful black men from our community that took their situation serious and became public figures. So I took my hat to both of them. But what I didn't like is how things transpired with them boys online because Mike Epps told a joke, you feel mm -hmm. me? Which that's what he get paid to do, tell jokes. And he aimed at Club Shay Shay because Club Shay Shay is trending heavy 2024. So I understand as him being a comedian, why not shoot shots over there at something that's sizzling? You feel me? Mm -hmm. But Shannon Sharp got in his feelings when he said, oh, yeah, Shannon Sharp um, inboxed me. Talking about he want me to come on club, Shay Shay, man. I'm not going over there. This nigga looking like my deal. Whoop, 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 whoop. Shannon Sharp couldn't take the joke. And next thing you know, he said, oh, you talking this and that since you want to lie. When I see you All-Star Weekend, I'm going to see as you about that. And when I heard Unc say that, I'm like, no, man. This, this, no, no. I This something you would hear. A young nigga, 17, 18, with a switch. No, it ain't, it ain't, it ain't, it ain't got nothing, it ain't got nothing to do with age. It got no, to it, do with it got to do with when a nigga hit when a nigga hit home. Mm -hmm. That's the reaction you get from anybody, regardless of age. But Mike Epps was telling a joke, but it hit home to Shannon Sharp. Why did mm -hmm. it hit home so hard to Shannon Sharp? Because you clearly sitting there expressing and trying to emphasize to us that him saying I'm zesty ain't why I'm mad. I'm mad because he, he lied. DM'd me and said I DM'd him trying to get him. Okay, listen to what you saying, Shannon. Uncle Shay Shay. Mm -hmm. Listen to what you saying, bro. You're not mad about him saying you're zesty. What you upset about is because he lying about you trying to get him on the show, DMing him. That ain't, that ain't, I'm not going to be mad or about him saying he DM'd me or I DM'd him versus him calling me Sesty. So I feel like this. He was mad about the nigga calling him Sesty. He just didn't want to play that card, so he threw it on the DMs. Yeah, the whole. And the DMs, the DMs is not worth being Wanting to see you and get your rocks off mad. No, he painted the calling whole, a nigga, calling a nigga zesty is though. Calling a nigga Madea and saying that you looking at your guest balls while they on the show. Hell yeah, he gonna be hot. Yeah, but 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 not even the Madea part, but the saying that he looking at a nigga, you know what I'm saying, sack. Mm -hmm. That goes in there with the zesty. Exactly. All that go together. He's mad about being called zesty. That nigga ain't mad about Mike Epps saying that nigga DM Mike Epps trying to get him on the show. That, that ain't what he mad about. He mad because this nigga attacked his manhood, bruh. Mm -hmm. He was basically saying like the show, like a fruitcake show. He don't want to go over there. But he didn't want to elaborate on that. Because it is questions lingering in the world as to what you doing out here, Shannon. Yeah. Every time we see you in public, you know who we see you with. So, 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 um, understand people's assumptions mm -hmm. of you, nigga. Because I've been following you for a long time. I've, I ain't seen you with a young lady yet. And there's no knock on you no type of way because we don't knock nobody from that community, man. We respect that community they totally. Was saying, they were saying they was they were saying that, you know, in the past that he don't like, you know, 
how they say about the rich folks they say black brothers don't deal with sisters when they reach a certain peak in their career or whatever but we know that it went too, and i don't believe that me though it went too far it went too far that uncle luke had to step out and say like hey man i'm older than all of y'all niggas like listen Y'all is not like that. Y'all is not ready to throw y'all careers over, I mean, away and sit in jail. You talking about put your hands on them. You sound like a little a teenager. You talking about shooting somebody. You sound like a teenager, too. Y'all both need to apologize to the public, to the kids. It was unpolished because at the end of the day, if we can't look up to the ones older than us because they acting younger than us, Mm-hmm. Who the fuck we supposed to look up to? That's a fact. So him, Uncle Luke, saying that. Shout out to Uncle Luke too for intervening because sometimes look how many other people could have intervened that both of these niggas got respect for when none of them spoke out like he did. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. shout out to Uncle Luke, man, because it it take the real one sometimes to intervene in situations that ain't necessary because it's a lot of instigators. And people that want to see people fall out of position. Understand that Stan is sharp in a position. Understand that Mike Epps in a position. Mm-hmm. It's a lot of people outside of them that want these people to fall out their position. So they're not going to intervene. So I got that much more respect for Uncle Luke because nigga podcasting and comedy he ain't got shit to do with right he didn't hang with these two niggas Mm -hmm. yet he got so much respect for the culture he feel like listen man y'all making us look bad and sometimes that's what it take man Mm -hmm. in this case nigga uncle luke was playing the old head in the joint calming the little niggas yeah yeah Man, y'all, man, cut that shit out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> For real. That's exactly Straight up. He said, I'm older than all of y'all. You know what I'm saying? And it take that because at the end of the day, like I said, if we if the people that we look up to acting younger than than us, who we who, you know what I'm saying? No. We doom, bruh. Straight up. We doom. You know what I'm saying? So shout out to them boys, Mike Epps and Uncle Say Say. Yeah. Club Say Say, because he is doing, he breaking a lot of barriers. He ain't just, he ain't just another nigga doing podcasts, bruh. Standing Sharp then, then, then built a platform to the point where he didn't opened up another lane in a big way to the point where it it, is promising to people that come from the field he came from which is sports Mm -hmm. to not have to resort to being commentators and being controlled by the espns and your sports Mm -hmm. centers and you see what i'm saying they can go build their own platforms and do their content how they want to do it and be successful because they already come with a following they they were successful superstars as athletes Mm-hmm. So shout out to Shannon Sharp and shout out to Cam Newton and all the other Brandon Marshall, Ocho Cinco, all the athletes that built these platforms because that's another lane for an athlete when they done with sports. You see what hey. I'm saying? Uh, oh yeah. We gotta commend that because mm-hmm. in at the end of the day, when they make these platforms, they control them. Versus being controlled when they want to go be a commentator on sports center, they got to watch what they say. Da, right. da, 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 da. They can't be them. Yeah, they 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 are a, a puppet. Yeah, so like, Shannon Sharp is important to the culture, mm-hmm. just as much as Mike Epps is important to the culture. They important for two different reasons. You got to respect any man that's willing to give a person a platform for them to 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 talk about their pain or uh whatever comfortably and not be judged or be or be looked down upon you feel me yeah that's why that's why people feel comfortable with you know rocking out with um so shout out to all of them boys but this all we got for y'all 
on this episode of It's Time for That Culture for the Street, man. Y'all know what it is. It's up and it's stuck and it's on the flow. You did. Strike them buttons, man. Pipe us all the way up, man. You know what I'm saying? Part of the reason why we ain't all the way turned up. You ain't hitting them buttons, man. Hit them buttons, man. Culture for the streets, man. We out of here. Out.